Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at ya. So, as promised in last week's video, and as that natural extension really, we've put together this project that's open sourced on GitHub, and it combines these kind of four core pillars together. Unity, WebXR, MetaMask, and N Ethereum, all working cohesively in a specific project so that you have a decentralized and censorship resistant application, which is honestly so liberating and rewarding to actually see kind of working together. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but seeing these technologies really come together in that way that is censorship resistant and is decentralized, I personally think is incredibly powerful. As I mentioned, this project that we're gonna be going over in this video is open sourced on GitHub. And just to kind of quickly give a quick summary of this, this is very much a prototype, but the idea is that you have a WebXR application powered actually by BRTK to handle all of our interactions. And you use that very simply to get the balance of how much Ethereum that you have in your MetaMask wallet, represent that as tokens and virtual objects that you can mess around and play around with within WebXR. And then you can grab those, put them into a bin, and then press a button, thanks again to VRTK. When you press that button, we'll count the number of tokens that are within that bin and that will spawn up a MetaMask transaction that you can then go ahead and sign and send off into the blockchain thanks to MetaMask. With that sent, then we go ahead and wait for the blockchain to process that transaction, and then we refresh the, the application, and you can do the same process over again. Trivial, yes, but it's really designed to be more of a showcase to actually show all these different components really working in harmony together, which I think, again, super, super powerful. Before we kind of dive into the project over specifically, I'd love to know down in the comments below, what are those natural extensions you would love to see added to this project? Uh, for me personally, I've been looking a little bit at multiplayer and smart contract integrations, specifically around NFTs, which I think is of, of course the hot topic of the day, but I think both of those are pretty interesting paths or even custom smart contracts, I think would be really interesting to, to take a look at as well. But Beyond just those three, I'd be really curious to know what are some of those other ideas that you think would be really powerful in a censorship resistant and decentralized application. Let me know those in the comments below. And with that said, let's go ahead and switch gears and look at the project overview. This project is open sourced on GitHub, so you can go ahead and just clone the master branch and you should be good to go there. I've made a couple notes here on the README, otherwise the rest of the README is pretty much just the N Ethereum README. So you can feel free to, to browse that for more kind of specific details about that as well. Unity project here, kind of again, based off of that MetaMask only branch that we discussed last week in our previous video. And so you kind of have the N Ethereum, you have Ethereum Flappy Bird, as well as kind of the templates that were available with WebGL. So that's kind of the core crux of this, and then everything else is augmented on top of that. So for WebVR, of course, we've gone ahead and imported in the WebXR exporter, and for interactions, I'm going in using VRTK because that'll allow us to do kind of just some very simple interactions for the purposes of just getting a demonstration up and running within VR. That's pretty much everything that we've gone ahead and imported in here. The scene that we're taking a look at here is under Fused VR, under scenes. We have a simple nature scene here, which is just an asset that I found off the asset store. Uh, very just kind of scenic. I don't just kind of wanted to use something as opposed to looking at the standard Unity cube, if you will. And then from there, we can actually go ahead and all the really core functionality that's happening here is happening within the game view. We have this sample text that I've just kind of put here to just log everything that's happening and kind of being able to see that within VR. We have a table just to hold our physics. We have a button and then we have this can, if you will. As far as the button and kind of the VRTK specific stuff, we can quickly take a look at. Uh, that's based on the tracked alias. Uh, we've gone into more detail on that on our VRTK and WebXR video, so I won't be diving into too much of that here. The, the one thing that's kind of new is this controllable the, that we're using as part of VRTK. And that's what's gonna allow us to do this button. And that was extremely easy to set up and customize as well. It's built off of interactables, which I think is really awesome to see. And you just simply set what is the axis you want your 
button to move in. So in our case, it's gonna be the Y axis. And then from there, you can actually just sign up for different events that are part of the button. So you have different events here for the minimum reached, the maximum reached, and then based on that, as you can see here, we've gone ahead and then once you hit that maximum, go ahead and send a transaction. And I'm also just kind of switching the color just so that you can visually see that you've hit the maximum for this button. So really intuitive as far as actually setting up the events goes. And again, you can customize everything here at the top of this linear driver facade, and that will allow you to customize your buttons however you want. Similarly, before we dive into more specific code here, we have this Tauros that I ended up building really quickly in a Mesh Builder. And this is just kind of very simple. Like there's nothing too fancy going on here. And then there's just a trigger on the inside that captures when we our tokens count, come in and then we can keep track of them so that we send that data off into the token manager. And then speaking of the token manager, we can go ahead and pull up that code that interacts with our Ethereum manager, which is responsible for sending out that transaction, as well as just keeping track of how many tokens that we have in the scene and how are they, are, are they in the bin? Are they outside of the bin? And then when we click that button to send the correct number of tokens and amount of Ethereum to that Ethereum transaction. So as you can see here, 0.1 Ethereum is what our token value is. We have that trigger zone, which represents that small area that we want to uh, check for whether or not cubes are entering or not. And then the rest of this is just interacting with Ethereum. So from our send transaction here to checking the balance, spawning in the tokens, not nothing too fancy uh, as far as things go here. Um, then we also have some abilities to just kind of test within the editor with getting the address. The Ethereum manager from our MetaMask video has changed ever so slightly. Most of the changes actually happen on the WebGL side of things, which we'll dive into in a lot more detail. But uh, really simply here, I've just kind of updated our send transaction so that we can send callbacks. Um, although I'll dive a little bit more into some of the nuances there in just a second. Uh, get account, still the same thing. And then we have callbacks to actually listen for the fact that our uh, Ethereum transaction has gone through. There is a transaction hash associated with that. We wait for it to actually get processed on the blockchain, which is what's happening here with the polling. And again, as I kind of mentioned in the MetaMask video, this has to be I enumerator specific. You can't use asyncs because WebGL does not support uh, using threads. So make sure you're using coroutines whenever you're, you're interacting with an Ethereum in this type of regard. But so we have that callback. We wait for that transaction to get processed. Once we do, we can set up our any callbacks within Unity to go ahead and broadcast that our transaction actually got processed. And that's kind of the, the main change that happened here. Heading over to the WebGL side. So uh, just so that you know, within Unity, these are located within, or more, more specifically, let's, let's head to our build settings. If we head to player settings, you'll see that we're using the WebXR template here. Uh, I've actually removed the 2020 implementation. If you want, you can go ahead and copy back to that in, but uh, just because I was using 2019, which I found to be a lot more stable anyways. Uh, but if you wanna use 2020, feel free to do so. There's just a slight requirement change that you need to do with WebXR in that regard. But uh, anyway, uh, we are using the WebXR template. So I'll go ahead and drag that into Sublime here and you can take a look. And this one has that ability to work with WebXR as well as also working with Ethereum. So I've added most of that Ethereum code here into this template so that that's pretty simple and straightforward to use. I've also gone ahead and created a template data for the MetaMask plugin that we can also go ahead and take a look at here. So those same functions that we had in our MetaMask only video, I've just gone ahead and moved that into JS so that it's just kind of contained in one specific area and then just pulled into HTML here. Uh, we still have the connect to MetaMask available within JavaScript, but uh, otherwise the rest of this is all WebXR related. The thing that's probably changed the most and I probably spent the most amount of time tweaking was, I mean, there, there's, get account stayed pretty much the same, but it was the send transaction function. So with send transaction, unlike last time where we just simply sent the transaction and then Unity didn't have to care about it. In this case, we actually do care about the data coming back. 
So as a result, we need to set up a callback into Unity from JavaScript so that Unity can, can listen for that callback and, and receive the events and then handle things accordingly. With Ethereum, because proce processing doesn't happen immediately, nothing here is actually synchronized. You have to send something to the blockchain, wait seconds, if not minutes, sometimes even hours for things to process. So you need to set that call back up and that the transaction haps really represents that ID, if you will, for allowing us to keep track of everything that we're doing when it comes to sending messages with Ethereum. So everything at the top here is pretty much the same. We get the account, which is pretty much instant from MetaMask. Then we go ahead and send that transaction here. Once you send that transaction, then we have the transaction hash that we will send using this unity instance.send message function. This gets a little confusing because it's kind of similar to the send message function that you typically use within the context of unity. But uh, this is a send message function where you pass in the game object, the function on a script that is on that game object, as well as the data associated with that. And then unity will send that as a callback back into our specific function here that we saw in C-sharp. So that is this transaction callback. I was trying to get this to work with a return object and return function where Unity would pass in those parameters. It is passing the data correctly. However, one of the problems is that because this is all pointer-based logic, you get into the point where some of this data ends up getting cleaned up because everything is happening asynchronously. And so, while the data was valid up here, by the time you get into this callback down below, it has lost track of those pointers and is not able to, to actually keep track of that data. I couldn't find a good way to keep track of that data, so I ultimately ended up hard coding in the game object as well as the function name here for us to use. But if you have suggestions or things that I haven't taken a look at or I'm just inexperienced with, in that regard, I'd love to know those down in the comments below as well. But then otherwise, at that point, you now have a pipeline where you are effectively creating transactions with BR, running that into MetaMask. For MetaMask, it handles the Ethereum transaction and just passes you an ID associated with that. And then you get the callbacks associated with that. And I think that pipeline is the exact right process that you would want for any specific type of Unity, WebXR, and Ethereum application where all of the handling is happen, happening at its core components and then the data is just passing along through these various different interactions and you kind of code within the own, only context of that specific need. So the WebXR piece and Unity piece mainly focuses just on the Unity side and it's just kind of listening for things while the signing and the actual uh, processing on Ethereum's blockchain happens with MetaMask. If you wanna go ahead and try this out, feel free to either make a build and then run that through HTTP server as we've done in previous WebXR videos, or alternatively, I'll go ahead and leave a demo of that on our Fuse VR website that you can go ahead and check out. I think, again, I think there's so much potential here with this kind of flow, and I'm, I'm kind of hoping this project overview kind of lays that foundation for people to kind of start at least taking some of this stuff a little bit more seriously. I think there's still a lot of kinks that need to be worked out as far in terms of actually kind of making WebXR a little bit more production ready, making kind of that handholding between Unity and WebGL a little bit more production ready. But a lot of the groundwork has been laid and I think that's really, really powerful. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, I'd love to know what you'd like to see uh, more of built in the comments below, but I think that'll do it for now. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man.